this is Katie Colleen here. Welcome back, Colleen Clan. Or if you're new, then come join the family for day one of CoronacoCon in Spokane, Washington. Now, before I get into the vlog, I want to provide just a little bit of history with this con because I kind of go a ways back with it. So I've been covering CoronacoCon events since 2018. I covered their 2018 and 2019 years. Then the pandemic happened, and that was kind of hard on smaller cons. So CoronacoCon did some virtual events. Uh, and then it looked like they might be no more. <laughs> they had trouble finding some new staff and all the complications with a pandemic just cutting off their 2020 and 2021 years. But last year they hosted a fundraising gala and it looked like the con might come back. It is a little different this year though since they are kind of regrouping and restarting. So I want to talk a bit about that. First of all, the venue is the Hilton Doubletree Hotel. So we are not at the convention center. We're very close to it, but we are at the Hilton Hotel for the venue. This con has also put an 800 attendee cap. So that means only 800 attendees total and they have sold out for this weekend. So this would make it one of the smaller cons I've attended actually, but I think that's probably a pretty good move when they're just trying to get their con up and running again. And I am not cosplaying today. <laughs> I thought I'd just go with a casual look today. However, I am judging for the cosplay contest this weekend. I am a cosplay guest, so I will be very busy for the rest of the weekend. But seeing as today was the only day I didn't have anything planned, we're going, we're going with a casual look today. So I was incredibly optimistic to think that I could vlog this entire convention like usual while also judging the cosplay contest. So. You get commentary from the craft room again. I think I just need to accept that if I am judging or guesting at a con, I'm gonna have to do commentary at home. I'm just way too busy. <laughs> so the con started at two o'clock on Friday. You could get your badges sooner, but two o'clock is when they had opening ceremonies and everything really opened up. Overall, the biggest change is the venue. And that definitely affected the experience the most. Uh, obviously it also brought about the need for an attendance cap. The Hilton Doubletree is very, very close to the convention center. So here's the convention center and here's the hotel. So they share a parking garage. It's still in the same location in Spokane. And that means you are still on the Spokane Riverfront and you get to have all the beautiful locations of the Riverfront Park. So here is the parking garage of the hotel. Turn around, here is the beautiful Riverfront Park. I think the photo locations at Coronacocon is one of the coolest things about this con. <laughs> the Spokane Riverfront is just so beautiful and there's so many photo shoot options. So I'm really glad that even though they couldn't be at the convention center, they're still on the riverfront. As far as the actual event space inside the hotel, so they had a few ballrooms on the bottom floor, a few panel rooms, and then I think two panel rooms on the third floor also. So the con was kind of split across the hotel lobby and there was quite a bit more mingling between convention guests and normal people just staying at the hotel. It's kind of unavoidable when it comes to hotel cons, like it is what it is. <laughs> I think the 800 attendee cap was a really good choice because while there were times it was more crowded than others, it was never so crowded I could not get my wheelchair through the crowd. I don't have any accessibility concerns or critiques for this con and additionally there was enough space that you could take hall shots in the artist alley. <laughs> This picture was in the artist alley. Like there, there was plenty of space and there wasn't too much crowding. So I really appreciate that they did put the 800 attendee cap on this con. Good morning, Kuronakukon. It is day two of Kuronakukon. This is cosplay contest day. Judging day, I will be judging for the majority of the con day. I uh, am pre-judging starts at 9.30, but I got up bright and early <laughs> and got into Miss Stella so I could take some pictures in the park. So I'm gonna do actually a quick self photo shoot. I have a pretty good idea of places that I can just leave the camera and record. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, get a few pictures of Stella cause I have upgraded basically every piece of this outfit since you last saw it. And I just, I think she looks so cute. So do some pictures and then I'll be off to pre-judging. This was my very first time doing pre-judging. So that is when 
the contestants meet with the judges before the actual contest and the judges can ask questions. I got to flip seams, which is like, mm, I, I love that. I love getting to like look at how well all the costumes are finished. I got to hold some props. Of course, all of this was done with permission, but like I got to see all these costumes really up close. You know, I, I get up really close to look at these costumes and I'd be like, oh, this hem, beautiful. Like the way you finish this prop, stunning. And then I'd get to the end and I'm like, they're too good. They're all too good. How do I choose an award? Uh, so sometimes prejudging helps decide, you know, who should get awarded and who shouldn't. Um, if you can kind of see the craftsmanship up close, but other times it just makes it just as hard. Uh, and people went hard at this cosplay contest. So I'm going to announce our guest judges that are at the front of the room. You might not be able to see them, but they are here. They exist. We have our guest judge, Colleen Cosplays. <laughs> from Tiger Cat Productions. <laughs> Alright you guys, who is ready for some cosplay contest winners? <laughs> Alrighty, we're going to bring out our cosplay contest. We've got Colleen Cosplay, Tigress from the Tiger Cat Productions, and Keon Cloud. This costume had a beautiful use of accessorizing and a great attention to detail. We love the makeup, we love the wig. There's so many little details incorporated into this costume and it's just an astounding level of craftsmanship for not a category. <laughs> this costume showcased so many different types of craftsmanship. There is sewing, there is foam, there is detailing, there is prop work, there is wig work. Uh, it just showed an overall understanding of a lot of different crafts and of course wonderful stage presence as well. We love seeing the originality in these designs. You can clearly see that they are based off of Pokemon, but from there they have taken it to create this D&D-esque beautiful princess and knight sort of thing. We just loved the original concept of it and of course beautiful craftsmanship as well. This costume is just beautifully made. It's really a treat to get close, look at the hems. The lace is dyed to match the costume. All of that tool has a rolled hem. It is just beautiful, beautiful craftsmanship. I, it's a treat to see up close. And of course, the stage presence had us all captivated. <laughs> Something that really stuck out to us about this costume was the research that went into historical techniques and historical fabrics. There's a lot of planning that went into this costume before the first stitch was even sewn and it is clean. The seams are beautiful outside and inside. The only thing I wanted to talk about is more of a personal Colleen thing than a review about the con. Uh, I've been a part of this con for a long time. I think this is kind of like my home con in a way. And I competed at this con in the 2018 and 2019 years. I think Kroneko Con 2018 was maybe like the fourth cosplay contest I had ever done. Um, and I competed my Tamari. And this is my first time judging at a con that I've also competed at a previous year. So I know what it feels like to be a competitor at Kroneko Con. And I know that for whatever reason, people go hard at this con. Uh, I never placed at Kuro Con in either of the years I competed. People just, they bring out some really impressive builds for this one. And I also was really familiar with how judging went and how the categories were divided because I've been there. I've been in the contestants' shoes. I don't know. I'm just so honored that like people trusted me <laughs> to be a judge and tell me about their costumes and getting to see this con that... I've been at for so many years from the perspective of a judge. Uh, it was just a really cool opportunity. So after the cosplay contest, and then I also did the Rose City Fashion Week cosplay runway thing. <laughs> so this was basically a cosplay contest, but without any of the stress. So they just rent out the main events room. Uh, they put up the Rose City Fashion Week backdrop 
and anyone who wants to get on stage and get a picture taken can. We have Stella from Winx Club cosplayed by Colleen Cosplay. Give it up for Colleen. Good morning, Kuro Neko Con. It is day three of Con, the final day, and it is Monster High Day. So uh, we're doing good today. We have a Monster High photo shoot. I'm gonna meet up with my Venus McFly trap. I'm Draculara. You can see I figured out how to holster my pom-poms onto my wheelchair. It's a good day. Uh, so we're gonna do pictures. Uh, yesterday was the busy day. So today is just getting to hang out with friends and be a little pink monster and have a good time. So I'm really excited for that. I got to debut my Fear Leaning Draculara cosplay. My friend Enchanted Bell cosplay brought out a Venus McFly trap and we got to cosplay those together. I attended the original design and cosplay panel and then I left because I also had to go to work on Monday and I don't know if you've ever stayed really late at a con on Sunday, but that Monday after hit so hard. So as you can imagine, a lot of the stuff at this con was downsized because they're not in the convention center, they're in a hotel. Like by necessity, you're gonna have to downsize some stuff. I feel like not much cosplay stuff got cut. Uh, this con has always had a lot of cosplay programming and a lot of cosplay events and they still had a lot of those events even at the smaller version of the con. So we still had the cosplay contest, we still had the cosplay lip sync, we had a lot of cosplay panels. Uh, obviously we had the fashion week runway thing and they did a fashion show later too. Uh, really the only cosplay thing that got cut is they weren't able to do cosplay chess this year because they didn't have enough signups. Um, obviously some things had to be downsized like there were less contestants and less participants in each one of those things uh, but not a lot was cut the things that did get cut they had tabletop gaming but they did not have the video game room they had to cut back on the dances they did have one dance on friday night i believe uh, but they didn't have the usual two dances the formal and the rave they still had karaoke, they still had the escape rooms. Overall, I feel like they did a really good job of keeping all of the events that they could and just making it smaller. As I said, this is kind of my home con in a way. So I know a lot of people at this con, a lot of my friends are there, uh, a lot of my community is there. So it's a con that I'm probably gonna attend every year, uh, no matter what the venue situation looks like. And with current EchoCon over, that is the end of my summer con marathon! I have done a con every month since April. And I've done video work for all of those cons. I did Soccer Con in April, Sage Fen in May, Mid Valley in June, and then ending it up with current EchoCon. And your girl needs a break! I need a break from cons. So we're gonna be getting back to just making fun stuff in the craft room. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.